please stand. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Please sit as we now have the tribute. Tribute by Kayleen Burgess. Thank you. 
Definitely called her, was married to the late Bellamy Monty Proverbs for the seven for seven years before his passing, and was mother to nine nine children and three three of whom predeceased her. Mom stood atop five generations, which along with her children included twenty three grandchildren. 15 great-grands, and six great-great-grandchildren. Having to take on the role of both mother and father, mom worked hard to provide for and raise her children. I don't recall a time, okay, I don't recall a time that mom wasn't working. She worked in the plantation, did smoking, and various crafts, which all the children and grands had to learn and assist in meeting deadlines. She also worked in the food service industry and eventually went on to, to being fully self-employed. Firstly, by heading into Bridgetown with her tray of provisions and fruits and vegetables to sell. And lastly, running her own village shop in Carrington Village. Mom was a hustler and seemed to be always in a hurry to get wherever she was going. Then... <laughs> There was, when there was, oh, when there was someone to buckle her shoes, and Carol and Clarence would oftentimes have to run to stop the bus so that mom wouldn't miss it. They would play to be Ben Johnson or Carol Lewis to see who got there first, but the bus driver knew them so well that once these two sprinters were spotted running with hands in the air, they would stop and wait, knowing full well that mom was trailing behind. If you were looking for something, couldn't find it, mom was here, go to Elsie and look for it. It could never be found there because Elsie was the next door neighbor. And don't let her leave something to be done and she return home to see that it wasn't done. You better believe that she will wake you from your sleep to make sure you do it. We wish to thank each of you for your kind words and support in our time of loss. A special thanks to the nurses and doctors of the Jayatri and St. Philip District Hospital. We end with this poem written by Dr. Marva. If there is trouble around you, a heavy burden to bear, don't cry, complain, or worry. Just begin to pray. We look to friends and family as there is no other way. So seek ye first, Jesus. Christ Jesus, and then begin to pray. His love is satisfying. His promises are true. You never find such healing till you begin to pray. Thank you. Please stand. The Lord is let us pray. God of grace and glory, I remember before you this down to study journey. We thank you for giving her to us, family and friends. To know and love as a companion and our earthly children. We have one less than time for us all us Give us faith to see that we get our eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth. Until the way of Paul, we are reunited with those who have gone before in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hand 427.
and the resurrection to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the first Bible reading. is a reading from the Word of God written in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 11. A time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to hear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human works. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. Yet, no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Here ends the reading. Good evening. A reading from the Word of God, written in John 14, 
verse 1 to 6. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, will I come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also? And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord. And the life. I speak to know of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Part of the sixth verse of the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. I am the way and the truth and the life. Words of Jesus in his farewell discourse to his disciples. Words that possibly could have served to encourage, strengthen, and allow them to remain focused on continuing the work that he would have begun among them. The work of witnessing to God's love. And as he encouraged them to see his life and his ministry as being the way, the truth, and the life that would attest to God's unconditional love for humanity, they would have been able to really tap in on their faith and allow this faith to strengthen them to be of service in truly witnessing to God amidst all of the persecution, amidst all of the challenges that they would encounter. And as they were able to focus on his life, his ministry among them, they would come face to face with an understanding of God's unconditional love in making redemption, reconciliation possible for humanity. 
a demonstration of love, sincere love, sacrificial giving of his son for God in his infinite wisdom in seeing humanity drifting more and more from his embrace will not give up on humanity but will put out as it were the olive branch will give of his son and allow for redemption for reconciliation to be possible that we all can be sharing in this unconditional love of God and in the person of Jesus Christ we see and we understand a true witnessing of God's love. We see the truth in God's love being displayed in his life and his ministry. Where regardless of whatever situations he would have been confronted with, persecution, rejection, will continue to do good and to allow God's love to remain center within his act of service will be able to reach out to those in need to be the, the hope and the encouragement for those who would have been struggling and would have been able to really demonstrate how God being in the midst of all things truly cares. So Jesus' ministry would have borne witness to the truth of God's love. We are even able to see Jesus' ministry as a ministry demonstrating how we can accept each and every one where they are at and still be able, even if we have differences, to do good in all circumstances. And most of all, this way of life that was projected to us through the ministry of Jesus was a life of humility, where he was humble, humble in every single aspect and did not just go about flaunting his power or even being judgmental or considering others to be beneath him but was able to live with each and every one to accept and to work towards improving the plight of those he encountered. And in this life of Jesus, we also see how it was necessary to remain in union with God where even during our difficult times, we see the need to offer our reverence and praise to Almighty God, to acknowledge Him as the supreme being, the source of all life, and the source of our help and encouragement. And as Jesus would display this ministry among his disciples, he would now encourage them to remain focused and to continue to go forward. Allow the faith to strengthen them to be of service in witnessing for Almighty God. And as we gather this evening to give Almighty God thanks for the life and witness of our departed sister, Jardine, I want us to focus on faith allowing us to be of service in the here and now. Faith in God to give us the strength even when we are down and out. Faith in God to allow us to be always there, giving of our best, and not to lose heart and surrender to the forces that are there to just sometimes weaken or confuse or path or journey in this world you see sometimes people believe that when everything is going good that yes God is very much present and anytime the table changes and there are challenges looking on from the outside we might well hear that God is somewhere or not responding. We might even hear people trying to decipher why God is not allowing everything to go smoothly. But my friends, this life is not a life, a bed of roses. It is not a life that presents to us a bed of roses. But through this faith in God, we are able to encounter each and every challenge along this journey 
knowing that we are never alone. And regardless of whatever happened, once God provides the hope in life, we too can overcome our challenges. And as we're able to overcome our challenges, we can present ourselves as a people of service. And as we think about this faith allowing us to be a people of service, I want us to think about our brothers and sisters. Think about community living. Think about those people among us who regardless to whatever condition or circumstances they are facing, will still allow themselves to be of service to humanity, making whatever sacrifices are necessary to allow God's love to be shared and experienced. And as we do such, I invite you to give God thanks for the life of Jardine. And see her as a woman of faith who regardless of whatever challenges she was experiencing in her life, could still remain focused of giving her best and being a woman of love and charity. Love that would see her reaching out to those who probably would have been less fortunate than herself and still being able to give, still being able to give, to encourage and to support. Be able to demonstrate love even if you do not know that person next door, but recognizing that it is the child of God to see yourself being of service and responding to the needs of others. And if we are able to really, those of us who would have known her, if we are able to really embrace her life and see her commitment and her sacrifice to giving of her best in all situations, then we can be a tower of strength for those who are in need in the here and now and offer that hope and encouragement that is so much lacking in the minds of our people and especially our young people. Jardine, I met her in Tweesay Road. Mm -hmm. A woman who was always able to offer a word of encouragement. And even if there was no money in pocket, to give something from the prayer. A woman who was able to reach out to each and every one through love and sincerity and give of her best in all circumstances. And oh, how we, we should be really celebrating people of this nature and this understanding with life. For as we go around the world, we see and encounter people who are extremely selfish. And the more they have, the more they want. And still miserable. But whatever little she would have had, she was able I'm going to say it, to be thrifty, to demonstrate thriftiness and allow it to go across and touch other people's lives in a positive way. And if this is not God at work in his servants, then those of us who are looking for God to come and to do these miraculous things, we are missing the point. For God works through his people in a special way when our needs are met through acts of charity and love and simplicity. A woman who was able to do it and still remain humble. You know, every time someone gives you something nowadays, you better try to figure out what is the purpose behind it. And even when it comes to meeting or extending acts of love and charity to those who are considered to be among the most vulnerable within society, we are now faced as a people with cases and instances where if somebody can give you something, they've got to bring the cameras, the press, everybody got to come out, and everybody got to know. When it 
happens like this, I am, I am always trying to wonder what is the sincerity? What is the genuineness in this? Is this for publicity? Is this just to, to, to be accepted as someone who has given? I give you another example of such where people will give you things and if, and especially in the church, when somebody give you something, even if it's a mat at the door, and you as the preacher or the person responsible don't announce it the Sunday morning when you got everybody in the church, that person vex you. Vex. And any time it happens like that, and anyone, thank God it don't happen to me. Because anyone who approach after such an experience, I will have to allow them to know that your purpose for giving was the wrong reason. You were given for the wrong reason. Too many of our people in this life, in this world today, give when we expect something in return or when we expect to be put on a pedestal. But not so with people of her ear and people like our departed sister who were able to give and to give unconditionally and do so without as they would say not allowing the right hand to know what the left hand doing and these are the people my friends that we should celebrate these are the people who the history pages in this island will never reflect long writings but who in our communities would have been able to touch lives in such a positive way that people could have been transformed People's life could have been improved and people could really experience God working in the midst of his people. And if we're able to really embrace such a life, to really embrace such a legacy as we are able to recall through our sister, then we can see the need for us to continue to remain focused on God's love to remain focused on Jesus being the way, the truth, and the life. And to live our life in community in such a way that we present ourselves as a people of service. Loving and caring for each other. Being the arm to support, the voice to encourage, and the air to even listen in times of need. And when we are able to do this, my friends... We are able to really identify as true disciples, true followers of Jesus the Christ, as we continue to witness to God's unconditional life, love in this world and present ourselves for the generations to come as a people who can celebrate God's love, who can live a life of purpose, and who can remain true and genuine in all acts of love and charity. So we thank God for her life and witness. And as we commend her to the almighty God this evening, I want all of you to cherish your memories and allow your memories to encourage, to shape, and to direct your responses to the many challenges that you will face in this life and go forward as a people of great hope, faith, and be of service to Almighty God. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the tender mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in this God of love in the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed in the booklet. I believe in God. Suffered, was crucified. the the During the singing of hymn 497, a collection will be received for the upkeep of the cemetery.
response to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, shall be hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, and we commemorate the departed. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life which you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy. May we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Show your mercy to the dying. Strengthen them with hope. And fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy. We commend all people to your unfailing love that in them your will may be fulfilled. And we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age. Pray that we may share with them in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father of all, we pray to you for Jordan and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. And may she and all the faithful departed through the tender mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let me take this opportunity on behalf of the parish family here at St. John to extend sincere condolences to the family of our departed sister and assure you of our prayerful support in this, your time of bereavement. Please remain standing for the commendation. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. Let us commend our sister Jardine to the mercy of God, our maker, 
and Redeemer. Deliver your servant, Jordan, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil, and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in eternal habitations. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jordan. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. The hymn 496.
to me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth says the spirit, They may rest from their labors, for they take with them the records of their deeds. In sure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God our sister Jordan, and we commit our body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your beloved Son shall come again in judgment, both, both this or our sister Jordan. And we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have the strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience not soaring as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen.
like a river attended by way.
as I journey through the land, singing as I go. As I journey through the land,
Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it's past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid because of your wrathful indignation. Our iniquities you have set before you. And our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord. How long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us and the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed.
Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious unto her. And all of his countenance upon her and give her peace. And unto him that is able to keep us from falling. And to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Come on, everybody, get your feet happy. Let's